Think about the biggest nations in the world. Japan. You want to think of Japan. Don't think of anything in Japan. Just think of its brands. Toyota, Honda, Mitsubishi, Sony. You can go on and on. Think of South Korea, Kia, Hyundai. You can go on and on. Germany, Mercedes-Benz, Adidas, uh, um, Opel, Volkswagen. You could go on and on. America, almost everyone in this room can name a U.S. brand and we won't exhaust it. That is why they are the most powerful economy in the world. The intelligence is to understand that ideas can grow and that the human will can be the architect of that growth. But that we have to numb ourselves to the limitations that we see every day. Like she rightly said, we shouldn't think about what is going wrong in Nigeria. We should think about what is going on in Nigeria and what exactly we can do about that. Are we on the same page? So think borderless. Borderlessness is the ability of the human spirit from one spot to spot value anywhere in the world and to be able to create solution blueprints that connect to that value, attracting purchasing power and traction from anywhere in the world, meeting it in headquarters in Lagos or Abuja or in Tokyo or in Banjul or in Conakry or somewhere in Senegal. That is the way it works. Be borderless in your thinking. Now, if you now have the necessity to move your body in your borderlessness, so be it. But before your body moves, your ideas need to move. And that is an intangible thing. The CEO of Rolls Royce said many years ago, the future will find less and less of developing uh, underdeveloped and developed nations. The future will find more and more of smart, smarter, and smarter, and smartest nations, particularly those who can offer their content in digital format, especially. And so tech has come. The future is a technocracy. It's about people who create ideas, otherwise called technologies, and those who manage them. That is how the future is going to work. And so there's no business in the future. Let me tell you for free. There's no business in the future. And I'm a futurist. I've been doing this thing for over 20 years. There's no business in the future that will not be driven by technology. It doesn't matter what you do. This thing we are doing here in the future is luxury. To have the benefit of human contact in the future is it's going to be very expensive. The future of human contact is no contact at all. So that we have to pay a lot of money to have contact. Now, that will destroy us on many levels. It will alter our condition and our design on many levels, but that's our reality. On a bigger tip, I can explain why that is critical for another superior conversation, particularly if we want to bring the Antichrist to the picture. But the truth is, whether we like it or not, the future has less and less of human contact to guarantee the human function and human malfunction that we breed problems at a higher level that evil is coming to solve so that there can be peace and peace and peace in the land and it can have its future. So let me land on two ideas. The first of all is what will entrepreneurs do? What entrepreneurs will do is very simple. Embrace brain gain. The diaspora must understand its own responsibility. I am convinced by the Spirit of God and by facts and study that no nation in the world will grow without its diaspora. Diaspora has always been the blessing of nations. If you think about it, everybody you know in the Bible, from Joseph, diaspora, Isaac, diaspora, Abraham, diaspora, Ezra, Daniel, diaspora, even the idea of Jesus coming down, diaspora, that God came down, diaspora, Jesus went to Egypt, diaspora, coming back home. Israel, being formed in a day, diaspora. There is no nation that has grown without a collaboration and organization of his waiting diaspora. The brain drain that we experience has now been converted into a potential brain gain. And that gain must be understood by organizing to wake up the diaspora to its socioeconomic and political destiny in the continent. The way that we work is that every year, about $48 billion is sent home in remittances. That $48 billion is so huge, it's the biggest income in the continent. But guess what is coming to solve? Welfare economics. The money for shoe, for house, for rent, and all of that. And we know that anybody living abroad sending money home is sending less than 5% of his income. About 95% is still sitting dark in his, in his host country. Now, if we mobilize Africans to begin to understand that they can repatriate just 20% without losing the 5% that they have before, take another 15% and repatriate it home. But that repatriation now is not for welfare economics, it's for investment in ideas. 
such that it's not just Americans who are invested in Florida Wave or in, in Jumia or in any of these countries. Africans can pull resources together and be the one funding the local ideas here. That is the association between local ideas and global relevance. The idea that we will pull funds in our brain gain and bring it home to fund ideas. So we need more incubators made by Africans for Africans, more accelerators made for Africans by Africans, intentionally searching for ideas, investing in ideas.